Hello, people of the interwebs. This is Dennis Rostaro, and welcome to a midweek episode of the Grounded Reason podcast. It's September 21st, and I have three news updates, and I also want to get into a topic on cord cutting. But before I get into today's show, I wanted to let you all know that I recently did an interview on a great podcast called The Money Girl Podcast. It's hosted by a personal finance expert, Laura Adams. Uh, You might have seen her. She's been on CNBC. um, She's been on Fox Business. She's been on NPR. uh, New York Times has done a piece about her. She's uh, written books about personal finance. So, I mean, she's really, you know, one of the the leaders out there in uh, the personal finance industry. And she was kind enough to have me on the show to interview me about how to save money uh, by cutting the cord and just getting rid of cable. So today I wanted to cover the format of the show for anyone who heard the interview on Money Girl and, you know, came over to check out the Grounded Reason podcast. As many of you already know, every Monday, my co-host Joel and I uh, have fun discussing topics around cord cutting. Um, But another important component of the show, which is why I'm on today, is uh, the Grounded Reason podcast midweek news updates. Basically, if news breaks during the week or there's an important topic that I need to cover regarding news concerning topics that we've discussed on the show, I'll hop on the mic to record and release a same day episode. So that'll get released out the day that I record it, which is why it's very important to hit that subscribe button. Because if you hit the subscribe button, not only will you get the Monday show, which is with myself and my co-host Joel, you'll also get these weekly news updates and mini episodes. So I just wanted to go over that for any, you know, new listeners who might be stopping by and, you know, to kind of level set and get an idea of, you know, when the show airs and what topics air when. You know, regular listeners, uh, they know that we've covered lots of shows on the topic of cord cutting, maybe a couple tangents here and there for fun. Today, I'm going to uh, recap some of those tips and tricks, go over a couple of news items that are important that hit this week. And also cover how to cut the cord on a budget and save as much money as possible. Uh, The reason why I'm going over that again is for any listeners of the Money Girl that happen to stop by, that's probably a, you know, topic that they're interested in hearing. So I'm going to go over that. And during that segment, I'll point you to other episodes on the show that might be of interest to you. Now, for regular listeners, I've gone over, you know, the different aspects of cutting the cord, but I don't think I've ever gone over how to do it as a efficient as possible to save as much money as possible. So, you know, there's a lot of new content here for you as well. But before that, let's get into a couple of news items. Um, As you know, if you've been listening, Google Fiber has uh, showed up in the podcast quite a bit lately. Uh, Specifically, they um, were pushing for a change in Nashville so Google Fiber could um, basically lay their fiber lines um, at a quicker rate because the laws currently in Nashville um, have a uh, something called pole attachment where if somebody wants to attach wiring to a utility pole, they have to basically go through this long bureaucratic process that involves all the companies that have wires out on the pole to come out and move them. So the new company, uh, in this case, Google Fiber, can actually go ahead and, and get their work done. Well, Google Fiber, earlier it was reported Google Fiber had 40,000 poles, uh, roughly, that uh, they needed uh, work done on, and um, only 33 <laughs> were completed. So they've been pushing for Nashville to kind of adjust the law or the process a bit. And I last reported that it made it through the second procedural vote, which means it went to the floor for a final vote, which was yesterday. And they passed it. So Google Fiber now, uh, basically it's a one-touch rule where they can get a licensed contractor to go out and basically set up the entire pole, all the wiring on it, so a company can come out and just do the work that they need to do. So this will cut, like they were saying, eight to nine months out of the process, which will really, really speed up the deployment of the fiber lines uh, that Google wants to lay down in Nashville. Uh, This is a huge win for, I would say, anybody interested in getting some, you know, more affordable, cheap internet and introducing a little competition into the industry. So I don't think this saga is finished because, you know, you can, they've already threatened a lawsuit. So I'm sure uh, you're going to be hearing the ISPs in Nashville or the state of Tennessee, um, coming forward with a a lawsuit to kind of get this law flipped around. In today's second item, I wanted to talk about Twitter. Twitter has newly entered 
uh, the streaming market. Earlier in the year, they announced that they would be airing a bunch of Thursday night NFL football games. Um, They also struck a deal with Bloomberg. And to that end, um, they're going to kind of keep pushing into these live events. And they just announced that they will be live streaming the U.S. presidential debates this year. You will be able to now stream the U.S. presidential debates this year anywhere you can watch Twitter. Um, So that includes, you know, your phone, tablets, and also recently Apple TV. You'll also be able to watch it by streaming it on the web at debates.twitter.com. The first debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump will be uh, this coming Monday, September 26th. Then you'll be able to watch the vice presidential debates uh, between uh, Mike Pence and Tim Kaine on October 4th. And the second and third debates are going to be on October 9th and October 19th. Um, So that'll all be available for you to watch on Twitter live stream. Finally, uh, the final news item is uh, DirecTV says that their new streaming service that they announced in March called DirecTV Now uh, will be out by the end of this year. Uh, The AT&T owned DirecTV will be following in the footsteps of Sling TV and PlayStation Vue uh, delivering a cable-like package over the internet. AT&T CEO uh, seems to have some ambitious plans. Uh, he was quoted as saying that they're going to be delivering 100 plus channels at a very aggressive price point. And as I said, this will be out before the end of the year. So that'll be another live streaming service entering the market, giving consumers even more options. So um, it looks like, you know, with uh, Dish and DirecTV are both putting out uh, streaming services to deliver essentially cable TV over the internet. So they must not be too afraid of cannibalizing their existing business. Uh, it looks like they're really trying to take it to cable on this. Um, there's also plans to connect um, this streaming service with AT&T's uh, mobile plans to where you're not going to be um, consuming data over uh, for using the uh, DirecTV Now. Uh, details on the plans are yet to be released. Um, so we're not a hundred percent sure on what those hundred channels are, but it's been speculated that they're going to be aiming for, uh, broadcast networks and most of the major cable networks, including ESPN and other Disney owned channels. So we're, you know, really excited to uh, check that out when that hits before the year's out. So that's it for today on news. So I wanted to get to the main topic of today's episode, which is how to cut the cord on a budget. Now, some of this might be a refresher, you know, here or there, but it's really going to give you the bare bones, most efficient way to do this. So when it comes down to it, one of the most important components of cutting the cord is affordable internet. Now, the trick to that is to not fall prey to the salesman on the other end of the line when you go to cancel your cable TV or satellite subscription because they're going to try to get you to purchase um, more than you probably need. You really only need 25 MIPS to cut the cord uh, and that'll give you a lot of extra you know, uh, bandwidth to play with because a HD stream really only uh, costs about 5 to 6 MIPS of, um, of bandwidth. So you could probably run about you know, three to four streams concurrently and surf the web a bit and be fine. So if you're by yourself, you might only need like 10 MIPS. Um, you can usually get about 25 MIPS uh, in most areas uh, for, you know, 40 to $50. Uh, so it's, it's, it's real easy um, to, you know, get the internet you need to cut the cord, stay and keep it affordable as long as you don't fall into the trap. Now, when you do call, you know, to uh, cancel, I'm sure they're going to try to offer you a skinny bundle where they will give you a, you know, cheap box for only, you know, $10 more and it'll have your basic uh, broadcast channels. Be beware of that because there are a lot of hidden fees in that deal. And I've seen it and that price almost doubles uh, from the promotional price over the long run because they do hook you into a two-year contract. Um, you're going to have to pay all kinds of fees and, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, there's box, there's, there's box fees, there's broadcast fees. There's, uh, if they throw a regional sports network in, you know, there's an issue there. Uh, and then they jack up the price in year two of the contract and you're left holding the bag, wishing that you never went on this in the first place. So I find it is better to just take the internet and run when it comes, uh, to canceling your cable TV. Um, as a matter of fact, Joel and I are going to be doing a show on this in roughly uh, two weeks uh, regarding cable boxes and how uh, they're kind of a trap and how it's really kind of like the unaccounted for cost that really winds up jacking up your bill in the end. We have a whole show planned on that where we cover the traps associated with the cable box and also get into the ongoing battle between uh, cable pay TV companies and the FCC over what to do about the exorbitant fees and money that people spend on these cable boxes. Okay, so now that we have our internet settled for around 40 to 50 bucks for your 25 MIPS, the next thing that you want to look at is your network TV. Uh, I've said this before, but, you know, almost 80, 80, I think 82% of the top 100 shows are able to be watched for free with an antenna. Don't be fooled by the marketing. Older antennas still pick up the digital signals. Um, what it comes down to is whether your TV tuner is an analog tuner or a digital tuner. That's what really matters. Any TV made after 2007 or later should have a digital tuner. Um, it'll typically indicate that right near the um, coaxial screw on the back of the TV. It'll usually indicate that it's – it'll see like a DTV or digital TV somewhere around there on that antenna port uh, on or near. So if any antenna will work with these and you have an antenna, just go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. I mean you might just be getting some free TV um, if you live close enough to the towers. Uh, it might cover all your network television. Um, if not – if you don't have one or you don't like the look of some of those older, you know, antennas, then you can go – if you live near in a city or you're kind of close to the towers, you can go and get yourself a Mohu Metro antenna. They're only about 20 bucks and they're great if you live within like 15 to 20 miles of the tower. It's rated for 30 but I recommend kind of being a bit closer to that. Um Otherwise, Mohu actually has a decent tool in their website and I'll put it in the show notes. Um, and you can go to their website, you type in your zip code and they'll give you an idea of what antennas will be best for you. Um, if you do live a little bit further away and the reception isn't so good in your area, um, you may need to purchase an outdoor antenna. Um, there's a bit of nuance in figuring out which outdoor antenna is right for you. There's this great tool on the web um, at tvfull.com where you can actually type in your address and it'll give you a bunch of information on the channels uh, in your area. And um, basically it'll, it has a little compass there and it shows you which direction the towers are and how much power they have. Now, the tool can be a bit scary uh, and difficult to figure out how to use if you're not familiar with any of this. But... Luckily, Joel and I on Monday, this Monday, are releasing our first kind of how to, you know, follow along podcast where we'll go right through the TV full uh, report and explain how to use it. We'll also be covering um, exactly what you should be looking for when it comes to which antenna you're going to buy to get TV uh, reception. So um, you'll learn a lot uh, even if you aren't following along with your TV full report. We're going to be going over lots of nuances, lots of details uh, when it comes to getting better TV antenna reception. So uh, stay tuned for that one. Um, so once you have your antenna set up, you're going to have free network TV. So your ABC, your NBC, your CBS, your Fox, PBS, that's all covered. Uh, we have internet. So the only thing you need now at this point is a device for streaming all of those shows that you can't find on network television, basically your cable TV shows. Um, as, a, as the far as that device goes, when I cut the cord, we just used an older Xbox 360. A lot of video gaming systems you can put these apps, these streaming apps on them. Uh, PlayStation uh, is another one uh, that allows you to put streaming apps on there. So if you have an older game console um, just lying around, go ahead and plug it in and you will probably be able to go ahead and just put those streaming apps on there. Um, you also, smart TVs are another solution if you have a smart TV. Uh, a lot of those come with streaming apps or you can put streaming apps on them. 
uh, even Blu-ray player. You know, you, you might have that functionality with a Blu-ray player. Basically, if it has an Ethernet port on the back, you probably, you know, might be able to uh, install some type of streaming app and save yourself some money. If you don't have um, any of those, you and you really, you know, if you're really serious about saving money, you can even take a laptop that has an HDMI out on it and hook it up to the TV. Uh, then you can, you know, watch those streaming apps or streaming websites on the computer, but your output, the monitor output is going to be your television. I've done that before. And the picture quality, at least on uh, my Mac is fantastic. So, I mean, that's a solution too. If you don't like any of those and you really do just want to get a streaming device, uh, the best way to save money on that is to probably pick up a Amazon Fire TV stick. They're about 40 bucks uh, or a Roku streaming stick. Those are about 50 bucks. Uh, both of those will allow you to stream TV shows uh, from streaming services over the net. Okay, so now that we have that, you know, you have your internet, you got your antenna for your network TVs, you got your streaming device. Uh, the next step is the actual content itself. Now, um, most people out there already have like an Amazon Prime or a Netflix. So I usually, I mean, I honestly don't even factor that cost in because the chances are you have one already and it doesn't really make sense. You're not going to double count it. You're not really going to be saving any money because even if you had cable, you're still going to carry uh, one of those two services. Now, I mean, sure, it's possible that you don't have one, but I'm just saying, you know, don't factor that in if you're already going to be paying for one of those services with cable. Um, those services basically will give you a, you know, a library of um older shows, older movies. Um, I mean, maybe, I mean, when I say older, sometimes it's, it's last season. Um, and you will, it'll give you a really a wide, you know, catalog of different, uh, content TV shows and movies to choose from. Um, I personally think prime Amazon prime is a fantastic value. Um, if you, cause it, a lot of the times you'll get free, you get free shipping on, um, f- through Amazon prime. So if you have, Amazon Prime, it entitles you to all this video um, out there, all a lot of music as well. Um, and then there's all this free shipping. So, I mean, Amazon Prime costs $99 a year. So if you do your Christmas shopping through Amazon, you might be able to make all that back in just the shipping alone and you essentially have a free streaming service. So that's something to look into if you don't already have it. Um, there's plenty of uh, quality content out there on Amazon Prime. Um, but Let's actually get down to the current TV shows because these Netflix and Amazon Prime, uh, while they do have their own original content, um, shows on AMC, um, I don't know, uh, an FX like uh, The Walking Dead or uh, American Horror Story or, or some big ones that, that people enjoy, um, you're going to have to do one of two things. Um, you can either buy the shows directly from like an Amazon or an iTunes. Now, you don't need Amazon Prime to buy buy a show through Amazon video. You can not be an Amazon prime subscriber and just go onto the site and buy a full current season pass to the current season of just about any show out there. People kind of look at me like, well, that can't, that doesn't that get expensive. And it really, it it might seem like it does, but uh, stay with me for a second. You're getting most of your network TV shows for free. If you're the shows uh, to buy a season pass in standard definition, because we're talking about saving money and being efficient here, um, will cost you 27 bucks for the entire season, the entire current season. So when Walking Dead comes out next month, um, the new season, you can go ahead and buy a season pass. It'll be twenty seven dollars for SD. And then you'll get every episode one day after it airs on AMC. So you're only like a day behind. Um, And so. If you do that with five shows, let's say you watch five shows on cable, because remember, network's free. You watch five shows on cable. Um, if you take that $27 times five and you break it down over 12 months, you're only paying $11.25 a month to watch those cable shows. This also allows you to put a dollar value on the shows you watch. It's not a hidden cost anymore, just baked into your cable bundle, and you're really only paying for quality shows that you think are worth paying for. Um, and not only that, you're not renting the show, you're owning the show. So you're almost, you're building yourself a uh, digital library. You can watch these shows whenever you want, um, anytime you want, you know, forever. I mean, well, until Amazon Prime, I mean, until Amazon goes out of business, which I don't think is ever really going to happen anytime soon. Uh, but so, so it's, I, I think it's a great value and it's an easy way to save money. Um, now, if you're watching a lot of TV, if you're watching 10 shows, that cost gets up to about $22.50 a month. 
So at 10 shows, you might want to start looking at one of those packages, like I spoke of earlier, how uh, during the news segment, how um, AT&T is releasing DirecTV Now uh, by the end of the year. Well, there's already uh, two services out there that deliver cable channels over the internet. Uh, one is Sling TV. Um, and the other is PlayStation Vu. I'll put um, – we did a show on that. Uh, I think it's uh, week three or four. If you go back, it's uh, how to stream cable TV. And it goes into both services and what each offer. Um, I'll also pop that in the show notes as well. Um, so that's if you're you know, if you're getting up there in, uh, in, in, in the amount of shows you watch, the non-network shows. Uh, get up to around 10. That's when you want to – that's the, probably the price point where you want to start looking at these other services. Um, but I, I mean 10 shows a year, that's a lot of – that's a lot of cable shows. I'm hard-pressed to you know, name five to six shows uh, on cable that I would actually you know, uh, pay to watch. I got a handful of shows I like, you know, like three or four that I pay for. Uh, every year, the rest is on uh, network for the most part, or I can just wait until it comes on uh, Amazon Prime, or if it happens to come up on Netflix, you know, maybe I'll just pick up Netflix for you know a month, binge watch it, and then drop it. See, that's the real beauty of uh, cutting the cord here is you can actually you know you can juggle services, so you don't need to keep Netflix all year because it's a month to month with no long term contract. Same way with like um you know all those premium channels for the most part offer a streaming service like HBO Now, uh, Stars has one, uh, Showtime has one. You can pick up their service, watch their show that you want to watch. Like if, say, you like Homeland on Showtime, pick up Showtime, binge watch the current season of Homeland, and then dump it. You can save yourself a lot of money that way too uh, just by juggling services. Um, and, and cable TV with their contracts kind of lock you into you know keeping them, especially these skinny bundles. They lock you into keeping those premium channels now. Uh, it's not like you can just dump them anytime you want. Uh, so that, I mean, it's another plus column for the flexibility, uh, and, and ability to budget when it comes to uh, being a cord cutter. So to recap here, um, you know, you have, you know, if you're 40 to 50 bucks for your internet connection, you know, let's say, you know, you watch five shows. So that's another 11, 25 a month. Uh, so really those are your only, if you can get your antenna, if you already have an antenna, you already have a streaming service, there's no upfront cost at that point. I'll even say you don't have Netflix or Amazon Prime and you need a, a way to watch older movies or last season's TV shows. That only adds another $10 a month to the mix. So for, what's that, like 60 to 50 to $60, you just cut the cord um, and have a ton of content. And that includes your internet. So internet, all your TV watching, you're in at that price. That's it's really good. Now, you might be asking me, what about phone? Now, I mean, if we're really talking about saving money, I would just use the cell phone. Um, if you do need a landline, um, you can you can get one for less than $10 a month. They do voice over IP, and that also runs on your internet. And it doesn't take a lot of bandwidth at all, so it's, it's, it's negligible almost. Um, and that's, you know, so throw in another 10 bucks for that. So what is that? I mean... $70, $70 a month, you've cut the cord. Now, I mean, of course, there's some upfront costs if you need to purchase an antenna or a streaming device, but we're really only talking about 80 bucks. So, you know, for the price of one month of cable, you've got for, for your bundle, you know, you've set up your first month's payment. And if you have to buy a streaming service and antenna, it's pretty much all covered. After that, you're saving money. So $60, $70 a month, uh, ignore that first month. We'll just call that for startup costs. Uh, you're saving about a thousand dollars in that in that first year uh, off of most cable bundles, uh, so it's 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 really an easy way to save some money. Um, now, I mean, this is the most efficient, cost-effective way to do it. But even if you watch a ton of television, uh, at worst, worst, you are going to come like, you know, a, maybe twenty to thirty dollars under what your current bill is. So you're not going to be saving that much if you go and you buy a whole slew of services. But even then. Your contract with cable, it, it, it kind of it, it limits you. You can't, you know, you can't be flexible. You can't pick up a service and drop a service um, as easy. Uh, so, so with cutting the cord, that flexibility, I think, is just kind of worth worth the price alone. Uh, but if you use this efficient way that I just described, which gives you pretty much any everything you're going to be watching anyway, you're going to be saving about a thousand dollars or more a year. I mean, and you know, you invest that, you're going to be making even more money. So it's, it's really, it's, 
I mean, I don't, it's an easy decision really to just cut the cord. And here's the, here's the thing. If you don't like it, if you cut the cord and don't like it, they'll take you back. They'll always be ready there. The cable companies will be there to take your money. Trust me. They're not going to, they're not going to be sad. They're not going to, you know, hold a grudge. They'll gladly take that check if you want to go back to them. So give it a shot. A lot of these streaming services offer free trials. So you can just go and you know, grab the free trial, try the ones you like, uh, try the, try them all. The ones you like, you keep it. The ones you don't get rid of them. Uh, and then you can juggle services if you like to save money. Uh, it, it's limitless possibilities on what you can do with all the content that's out there these days. Um, all the links, um, I've discussed in the show, I'll put in the show notes, um, back at groundedreason.com. You know, I've got write-ups on all of this. Um, you know, you can go back and listen to the old podcast. We cover a lot, uh, a lot more detail on, on some of the finer points. So, I mean, that, that did go with, between the news and, and today's uh, topic. That, that went a little longer than uh, I expected. So I'm about ready to, you know, wrap this up. This mini episode has really kind of turned into a, a full-blown episode. Uh, but before I wrap up, I wanted to talk about um, a future direction of the show. And it's just, you know, it's not even like a full change in direction, just a slight veer. Um, as you know, you know, we have the Monday show that I spoke about, which is with uh, my co-host Joel and myself. Um, while, you know, the show's main focus has been cord cutting as well as the news updates, you know, we have the, a few tangential episodes where we discuss other things that are fun for us. Um, soon we're going to be expanding the podcast into other areas of consumer technology that will save us all time and money. Uh, don't worry, you know, the show is still mainly going to be focused on affordable ways to consume media without cable or satellite TV. Um, but we'll also be cover- covering uh, things like apps and, you know, other helpful tech that will uh, help all of us and improve our, you know, and better our daily, everyday lives. So in essence, what I really want to do is turn the Grounded Reason podcast into a show that's going to uh, boil down a lot of those, uh, you know, tech concepts out there that might be difficult for some to grasp. And I just want to make tech just more accessible to everyone out there. Now that doesn't mean, you know, you know, that we're not going to have the, uh, in the weeds episode every once in a while, cause you know how Joel and I can get, but I mean, for the most part, I just want to make this show accessible to everyone and anyone. Now, you know, in that vein, I always want to hear, uh, comments, questions, if you have a show idea, so you can email us at podcast at groundedreason.com. Uh, you can also tweet at Grounded Reason, or you can visit our Facebook page. Um, all those links will be in the show notes. Now, tune back in Monday, and Joel and I will explain how to get great TV antenna reception, and we'll also go through step-by-step step on how to use the tvfull.com antenna reception tool. Everyone, please remember to uh, subscribe to the podcast. And if you are subscribed and you like the podcast, please leave a review in iTunes. Uh, It would really, really help our ratings and we would all gladly appreciate it. We will see you on Monday. Monday.